I'm late. I had to nip back to the library. I pushed off with one of their reference books. <laughs> I got chatted up by a tramp. He'd come in out of the cold. Do you know what he said to me? He said, Martin! Oh my God, Martin, what's the matter with you? Can't you speak? <laughs> I'm holding my breath. <laughs> Why? Why? <sighs> One minute, ten seconds. What are you doing? I was seeing how long I could hold my breath in. What for? Paul Cocky Ryman. I might have known. What have you let him do to you now? He hasn't done anything to me. I'm making him look a fool. By sitting there going puce. <laughs> he claimed, he claimed that the average man was capable of holding his breath for six minutes. <laughs> and you believed him? No, that's the whole point. I've been running certain tests on myself which will leave him without a leg to stand on. I see. And you're going to go round there with all your data and try and trip him up? Yes. You know what he'll say? He'll say, I was only joking, Martin. Will he? We'll see. Why do you always let him get you at it? One of these days, if there's any justice in this world, I'm going to put an arrow through one of his hot air balloons and he'll crash down to earth where the rest of us live. Is it worth it? Yes, it is. Who was that Pope? Which Pope? Attila the Hun was at the very gates of Rome and this Pope came out and turned him back. Martin, you have no chance of becoming a Pope. You're not even a Roman Catholic. <laughs> I don't want to be the Pope. I'm talking about sanity and decency, stemming the flood of anarchistic dribble and irresponsibility put about by people like Paul Ryman. Martin, is it really worth it? Yes, it is. Just remember this. Nero fiddled whilst Rome burned. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, George. Thank you very much. There's yours, Thanks. Ah, uh, there they are. <laughs> there you are. Here we are, Martin. Yes, it's us, all right. You see, Anne, that's what I mean. I come in here, I see Harden Hill just sitting there, and my stomach turns right over. <laughs> I knitted these jerseys, Martin. No, 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 no. I should have said, you make my heart leap. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> they don't know, do they, Anne? And you're not telling them. All I'm trying to say, Howden Hilda, is just go on being who you are. Thank you, Martin. We will. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello, Paul. Hilda, if you can guess how many bottles of shampoo I've got in my left hand, I'll give you the pair of them. <laughs> Two. You've done me again. Anne? Um, one. Close enough. <laughs> oh. And it's a load of poppycock that the average man can hold his breath for six minutes. <laughs> I was only joking, Martin. Well, these are very nice, Paul, but why? Well, if I can't pinch my own stock before I sell it off... Sell it off? I'm closing down the salon. Had enough. Getting bored. But you've made a great success of it. Oh, well, probably why I'm getting bored. <laughs> what will you do then, Paul? Well, I think I'll open a health studio. Mm. And what's a health studio when it's at home? Well, you know, Martin, gym, sauna, jacuzzi, beauty treatment. There's nothing like that around here. Mm. I don't think we want anything like that around here. <laughs> Why on earth not? But don't come the innocent, Paul. Those places are just fronts, aren't they? Well, not mine. Mine would have a back and sides as well. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows what I mean. I'm sorry, Martin. I don't. News agents' windows. What about them? Bordellos. What? News agents? No! Oh, clowns. That's all they really are. Are you accusing Paul of opening a bawdy house? The implication is implicit. But it's mostly ladies who go to health studios, Martin. Look, I'm sure everyone knew what I meant. I don't see why I'm being cross-examined. I'd like to thank you, though, Martin. What? It's a great name for the place. The Bordello. You don't seriously intend to put that word on the front of an establishment. Well, there's no point putting it around the back. No one will see it. <laughs> you talk to him, Anne. I think it's a smashing idea. So do I. Fancy having a beauty treatment. 
Not that you need one, dear. <laughs> Romeo. Sweet. I should have to find bigger premises, of course. Oh, of course. I'll tell you who you could try. Mr Lazenby. Runs the Ironmongers. I think I know it. That sounds just like the place. He must be thinking of retiring soon. He's quite old. Who's to say, Paul, the right offer and he might sell? Well, thanks, Howard. I'll look him up. Waste of time. Lazenby's has been established since 1793. Blimey, he is old. <laughs> in other words, the Lazenby's of the world go on forever. That man is like the White Cliffs of Dover. What do you mean he's got a white, chalky face and green hair? I mean that although bits might fall off him each year, Mr Lazenby still stands there, proud and erect, stemming the flood of so-called health clubs. information like a gatling gun why did you come in so quietly well i'm afraid the mole valley valve's flag is flying at half mast Anne. sails down no somebody died at work today oh. who who died oh mr ruggles in stores i thought he was dead already no no <laughs> he did retire but he came back in a part-time capacity plucky old chap what killed him his Snoddle Durante impersonation. <laughs> Sorry, did you say his Schnozzle Durante impersonation? Yes. At times he made us laugh with that. <laughs> see, what he used to do, you see, was... You know those rubber liners we use on our WD-72 models? No, but yes. Well, he used to get hold of one of those, you see, and stick it on his face. See? Mm. Then he used to pretend to play the piano and hum, I'm the guy who found the lost chord. Sort of, uh, <laughs> like that. To be brutally frank, I never really thought he sounded very much like Snodgill Durante, but visually it was a very striking image. Yes, I can imagine, but what happened? Well, it seems he breathed in, he created a sort of vacuum or something, <laughs> and the thing got stuck over his nose and mouth. Did anyone notice? Well, he was pointing to it, but we all thought it was part of the act. <laughs> and it wasn't until he fell to the floor, clutching at his valve liner with his poor, frail old fingers, that we realised something was up. But, of course, by then, too late. <laughs> poor old chap. Yes, indeed. Still, it comes to us all. <laughs> I don't think many of us will go like that, <laughs> No, you're probably right there, love. And? Yes? When I'm old... Yes? If you find me doing any impersonations of any sort, you will stop me, won't you? Promise. Thanks, love. Good night. Yes, it was a lovely funeral. Martin was chosen to represent Mole Valley Valves. Quite a feather in the cap, Martin. A sad feather, Howard, but a feather nevertheless. We just put deepest sympathy on the wreath in the end. Cheerio schnoz was suggested, but... <laughs> this thing that got stuck on his face, did they bury him with it still on? <laughs> no, no, no. That came off as they put him into the ambulance. We all heard the noise. <laughs> I was thinking of ordering a bottle of wine, but when you think of the noise the cork makes when it comes out of the bottle... Very sensitive, love. Well done. Ah! A pick-me-up. Hello, stranger. Hello. Hello, stranger. Hello. Where have you been hiding yourself? Oh, here and there. Hello, everyone. Oh, Martin, I'm sorry. Anyone I know? A chap at work. All because of an impersonation. Glad that thing came off his face, though. 